Long time no see, guys. Now, I know you're probably expecting me to come back with another Skyrim video, but since Frostfall's taken forever to update to 2.0, I figured I'd do a Dishonored video instead. Um, which is good, because I really love this game. Stealth is one of my favorite genres, and this game does it really well, so... I'm gonna jump right into the meat of the game right here. Um, this is the second mission, High Overseer Campbell. This is the first mission that you go on after you get geared up with your mask and your sword and all that. Um, for my first playthrough, or at least for the first few chapters, I'm gonna try to not kill anyone because there's a chaos meter, so the more people you kill and the more shit gets disrupted, um, I guess later on in the game things will become more chaotic so to speak and you'll have to end up facing more guys and on pretty much every stealth game I play I turn the difficulty all the way up because I like that realism those of you who know me know that I like that realism so chunk out this guy it's not really that important to hide bodies at first just because People aren't going to be patrolling around as much, but I like to do it anyway. Zap behind this girl real quick. Choke her out. And my most important thing that I'm trying to do on these first missions is get all the runes. I want to get upgraded as fast as possible so that way in the later missions, if I do decide to start killing people, it'll be no sweat. So yeah, there's a bone charm over here. Lots of people miss this one, I'm assuming. On the back side of this tower over here. And I really like this game because even though technically it's not open world, the levels are really big, so there's a lot of room for exploration, and reading lore about the world and all that good lore stuff which they did a really good job with the atmosphere and the setting and all that I haven't seen a really good steampunk style anything for quite a bit of time so this is a breath of fresh air Because basically the one thing that makes steampunk steampunk is technology powered by steam. And as you get further into the story, or rather what you learned during the tutorial before this, is that everything's basically powered by whale oil, whale blubber, and whatnot. Which is pretty interesting. It's on the sea, it's a kingdom, lots of political controversy. I won't ruin the story too much for people who are just watching this as a guide or whatnot, but I like it. It's pretty good. I heard it gets kind of wonky at the end. It's pretty easy to assume that you're going to get betrayed by friends and whatnot. Although I haven't heard anything about this fool that I'm about to talk to. This deity or whatever that originally gave you your powers. Just speaks super obtusely, but can't really expect anything more from a mysterious, all-seeing god. So basically, he's just talking about Granny Rags, which was that girl that I'm, or this woman I'm about to talk to right here. Um, it'll do you well to talk to her and do what she says because you can get a couple runes from her which equals an upgrade or so so basically some dudes are gonna come harass her gentleman callers but not the good kind uh, I guess this girl got around back in the day anyway she gives you the key to the front door but you know you're a stealth assassin where the hell are you gonna go through the front door so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and go up the stairs, get on top of them and just take them out before they realize what's going on. 
Um, in this playthrough, I'm not gonna, I'm not able to be a shadow, so some guys see me, but I don't kill anyone, so I still get the bonus for that. It's just really annoying to have to restart every single time some dude spots me. Yeah, you can take the time to learn their patterns and everything like that, but I'm not here to spend all day on a single level, you know. So what I'm doing is darting around these guys, I'm going to get up above them and behind them. And there's three of them. Choking guys out is basically a one-on-one -on -one affair. So I'm just gonna put them all to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Yep, and after that, you can just head back on in and she'll have a rune waiting for you, along with another task. And this one's a little bit more in depth than putting her gentleman collars to sleep. She's going to say thanks and point you to where the rune is at, and then she's going to give you your next task, which will be sneaking into this professor's lab and uh, taking some dise disease disgusting rat guts and then taking it to a distillery and sabotaging the whole thing. Now I don't know how much your choices influence further gameplay. Um, I played this mission once before without sabotaging the distillery and in the next mission they kind of become your friend and give you some more missions so I don't know if this is gonna affect it we'll just have to see in the next Dishonored video I do but anyway yeah Let's speed through this real quick yeah so Dr. Galvani is the professor I was talking about and Bottle Street Distillery is the distillery I'm going to sabotage, so let's go check it out. Now right around this corner you're gonna see a couple ruffians harassing an old dude named Griff. And Griff is basically a wandering shop. Um I'm pretty sure he'll appear in just about every major fleshed out mission and you'll be able to stock up on darts and potions from him so it's pretty important that you save him. Now since I'm trying to do the stealth playthrough without any kills, um, something to keep in mind with these two guys is they're only going to patrol his door once and then after that they're just going to stand there and guard so unless you get him on that first patrol you're probably not going to be able to sneak up and choke him out so you'll see right here they'll guard the door for a few seconds and then start a patrol and the guy on the left he's gonna walk around that corner and what you're gonna do is zap behind him and choke him out and there he goes go to sleep go to sleep Stash his body real quick. And I guess right now I'll take the time to apologize. I didn't record actually any in-game noise. Um, I haven't been recording lately and when I started recording I didn't realize until it was too late that it wasn't recording game sound so apologize for no sound effects. Uh, it'll be back in my next video. I promise, Scout's Honor. Anyway, yeah, you'll talk to this guy. He'll let you know. Oh, yeah, up in the building behind him, there's a bone charm. So make sure you go up there. I don't know what the story is with these guys. I think he had some other ruffians try to beat him up and killed him up here or something. I don't know for sure. There's a lot of things I don't understand about this world. And I don't really want to understand. Evil people, man. Evil people. Mm. 
Might as well go ahead and get some sleep darts from him. Oh yeah, and get that zoom, that mask zoom too. I really like all the abilities that the mask and everything gives you. I really like the character, it kind of, it's like being the Grim Reaper. You're all hooded, your face looks like a skull, you're killing people in the night. Anyway, the best way to go about getting into his lab is just go straight up to the top door. There's three floors right there, just zap your way up to the top floor. It's the easiest way, trust me. I'm not going to be a super perfectionist and get all the coins. I very rarely even get half the coins in one of these missions. But uh, it's really important to me to get the runes. And the bone charms too, I guess, even though most of them aren't really all that useful. Some of them are. And anyway, some of them can be used at different times. Like if you drink water, there's one that lets you recover some mana if you drink from a faucet. And you can just pause and put that on whenever you see a faucet. It's not like you have to wear it all the time. When you first start off, you can only wear three, and I guess you could upgrade to start wearing more than three at once, but just switching them out is okay for now. Now that I'm in his lab, I spent some time exploring around and seeing what's what. This took me a minute to figure out where his actual lab was and how to open it. Should have guessed it was a mysterious book on the bookcase, but whatever. Read notes. Um, there's whale oil on that table somewhere. You'll see. Uh, that whale oil is worth uh, like 50 coins or something like that. Yeah, anyway. Do to do, walking around. Ah, uh, yeah. Pull that mysterious book, and in here is the disgusting, diseased rat guts. I use the blink quite a bit, and so I use those mana elixirs quite frequently when I don't really mean to. So if there is one tip I could suggest, don't spam the button. Try to let your mana recharge after using the blinky zappy spell. And I'm a goofball so I close this bookcase up so no one knows I was here. Even though I think by the end of this mission I get six bodies discovered. Either way, I don't kill anyone, so don't judge me for not being perfect. Now we're basically going to make our way back to the distillery, Granny Rags area. Um, and that's what I was talking about. Um, as I make my way over here, it's going to say hostile zone, so people are going to attack you on site as you go into this distillery. But in the next mission, they're like, our boss wants to talk to you, and all of a sudden they're nice again. And I don't know if that happens if you sabotage their distillery. Um, not like there's any logical reason why they would know that it was you or anything. Just wondering how much choices affect the gameplay because the chaos meter is pretty interesting in my opinion kind of goes along with the karma butterfly effect ordeal or rather they're just throwing more troops out because you keep killing them all either way it's kind of a neat concept can't wait to see what becomes of it whether if you're more stealth they'll put up more walls of light or more uh, searchlights or trigger alarms or traps and stuff like that. Speaking of traps, there's one up right through that doorway straight ahead right there and uh, just blink past it. Yeah, right here. Blink past it. Yeah. Yeah. This video is kind of edited because I didn't want to waste your time with me wandering around aimlessly. So I kind of just try to give you the highlights of 
actual game progress. And yeah, also there's a bone charm in here coming up and you'll see where I get it from. This is another one that I think people could easily miss. Hop down here. Yeah, I could have just jumped, but I used that blink much too frequently. Yeah, right up here, using these barrels to climb up, there's a bone charm on a strut up here. Pretty, pretty bone charm. And that twist of fortune is pretty nice. It's always nice getting a full mana recharge out of nowhere. So yeah, all that's left for me to do here is, uh, well, I guess I'll choke out this guy, hide his body, and then sabotage the distillery, then I'll be going back to Granny Rags for another rune, and then I can move on from this area. Sit down. So they call this bootleg, um, I don't know if the quality of it's any less, I doubt it, but I was just wondering why she would want it to be infected in the first place, whether Granny Rags is evil or what her deal is. She seems to be like on the side of the deity and he kind of seems like a good guy, I mean he's giving you the power to, you know, avenge the corruption anyway now we can move on Yeah, I just gotta say, traversing the landscape in this game is one of the funnest things ever. Probably the best thing about this game, honestly. Even without the blink spell, any game that allows you to grab onto ledges and pull yourself up is doing a good job in my book. Now we can return to Granny Rags and get another rune. You can see right there I get incredibly impatient with the blink spell when I have low mana. Don't do that. Take your time. Don't let your mana run all the way down in the first five minutes. Because later on you can use that mana to put together a whole bunch of combos and when you don't have any elixirs it's going to be kind of hard to pull off some of that crazy cool stuff where you're combining all your powers into one. That's why I'm not going to be able to finish this entire game without killing anybody because I'm cutting off most of the fun for myself when I do that. Which is probably one of my only critiques about this game is that there's not enough non-lethal ways to deal with situations, in my opinion. Another thing I like about this game though is there's just a lot of little situations you could find yourself in that don't really relate to anything and it really helps make the city come alive. Like right here, they're robbing this dude, a few criminals, and they get into an argument basically and uh, they'll kill one of them off. And I've seen it before too where they'll both die at the same time which really helps but it's not that big of a deal. This first mission's fairly easy. Still interesting though, it's kind of funny seeing them fight.
they really go nuts with that breathing fire technique too. I wonder if that was, that was ever actually an applicable fighting strategy. Take a swig of hardcore alcohol, put a match up to your face and blow fire at someone. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, anyway, these guys are pretty easily disposed of. Yeah, I think he saw me right there. But who cares? Didn't kill him. He should be thankful. So right in that building right there is another rune, and usually when you come across it, there'll be a guy inside there. Um, however you want to do it, just realize that there's usually a guy inside that building and then a couple roaming the streets. So just be careful. Take him out. Take your rune. They'll walk. Other guys will walk into this building too, so you gotta get rid of this body if you don't want him discovered. Take him back down the stairs, just be careful on your way out. There's probably a bit more to this area, but all I really care about is the runes at this point. So feel free to go back there and search around a little bit if you want, but me personally, I'm just gonna keep marching forward. I realize that it's probably pretty annoying to watch a lot of this video in dark vision, but I have to see those vision cones. Like I said, I take my stealth games pretty seriously. Alright, in this part, I thought there was going to be a little bit more to saving this guy or whatever, but obviously he's not that important. They give him a big ass area to trap him in, but only leave one guy protecting him. This guy sucks. Yeah, go to sleep. So basically, you talk to him, you pull a lever and release him, and he's like, thanks. He comes back later to help you. Not in this mission, but... So I guess there's a lot of ways to get into this building right here, but the easiest I've found is just go straight into the window to the meeting room where your target, you'll first see your target. So the deal going on here is that he's going to poison this guy with wine. There's two glasses already laid out and one has the poison on it and the other one doesn't. So you got a bunch of choices. You could either switch it up, leave it the way it is, but if you want to do what I do and not kill anyone, just break the glasses so no one gets poisoned. And what that'll do is force them to relocate into a more private area where you'll be able to save that other guy actually and dispose of your target. Also, while you're here, don't forget to pick up this rune or bone gem or whatever. And for most of the rest of this level, you're going to be staying up in the rafters like this. Either carrying a body or following people. 
So yeah, we're about to walk in here and then it's just a game of cat and mouse for a good while. There they are. Probably should have sped up the video a little bit more here, but that's alright. He makes it so obvious. Too bad you can't hear it. He like says it like super loud. He's like, time to do things the hard way. Referring to killing him. That idiot guy's just like, what did you say? Yeah. Well, anyway, right here, this part's a little bit tough because you have to follow him down these stairs and there's a few guards patrolling and whatnot. And they patrol everywhere in here, so I shouldn't have left that body right there because it does get discovered later on. But anyway, yeah, if you can, just get down there super fast, follow him down the stairs, and he takes him to a secret room. What you're gonna want to do right here is choke him out before he murders that guy looking at the painting. He then thanks you and lets you go. There's a lot of good treasure in this room too. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Totally thought he was gonna fight me right there. So anyway, make sure you pick up all the loot in here. Uh, also, don't forget to grab the painting that he's staring at. That's worth like a hundred creds or something like that. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take him up to this torture chamber and you're gonna brand him as a heretic or something like that. I forget exactly what you're gonna do to him. Oh, right. Um, this is the kennels part. My video is going to skip this sequence. Um, there's some treasure in there and there's a puzzle, but there's not really much in there of importance besides cash. There's no runes or anything like that in there. Kind of a neat little number matching puzzle to open up the safe or whatever, but we're gonna skip that for now anyway. Go back to what's important. Something that I've noticed too is as more and more guards go missing, um, the guards will expand their patrols outward to start looking for the missing guards and that's kind of interesting and keeps things rather dynamic. So yeah, gonna choke this guy out real quick. Stash body. And something that's important to remember is you can use your blink ability while you're carrying someone over your shoulder and that's pretty gosh darn important in this level. gonna shoot up to the rafters again here in just a moment. Yeah, there we go. So the first thing it has you do is you have to actually read the branding instructions, which is in this library type room. And uh, there's lots of different ways you could do this. I just stashed the body up here at first and Lots of guards come in here and patrol this room. So... You can try out different things. You don't have to do what I do since it's rather sloppy. But, uh... My best suggestion would be to somehow just get down there, read it real quick, and pop back up. But what I actually do is not what I suggest to do. And I end up choking out like three guys and having them all in one room on top of bookcases and stuff. 
not the most efficient, but it's effective. Yee. Yeah, they kind of just keep coming in here. Just keep choking them out and piling them up. Kind of wastes a lot of time when really all I need to do is read this real quick. But it's all good. Practice. So I got Campbell on my arm again. I've got the branding knowledge. Now it's time to make our way back downstairs, I think. Oh, never mind. It's right here. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so what you're gonna do is hop down here. I think I go close this door first. Excuse me. But yeah, hop down here. Put Campbell in his place. And go grab that branding iron. Gonna brand me some bald, ugly white man. Yeehaw! Anyway, this graphic's pretty cool, in my opinion. Yeah, that's what you deserve. So, now that we're done with that, it's basically just about getting back to the boat. But you're not going to go the same way that you came in. You can go through the backyard. And there's a bunch of buildings back there. A uh, couple dogs. Uh, some runes, some bone charms. But then after that, it's home free. So there's actually a couple different entrances to the backyard, um, but before we even go back there, there's this one encounter where these couple of douches are trying to antagonize this woman and her boyfriend or something like that. Didn't really get the gist of it, but anyway, I'm a hero, so I'm gonna save them. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Sleep Dartum. Oh yeah, the guy killed him himself. That's good. Anyway, they uh, thank me for helping them, and don't get too much more out of it. I know that there's probably some more stuff here, but the game's just too big, and I've only got so much time in the day. I apologize again for the lack of game sound. Probably would have made the video a little bit better, but I really don't feel like playing this mission again just for that. Hope you guys don't blame me. Okay, so we go back in here. Um, I think there was a way to get to the backyard from the previous scene that we were at, but most people are gonna use this entrance right here, so this is the one I'll show you guys. So I basically take a roundabout way. Um, the most important thing to grab in here is the rune. There's a couple bone charms as well, but I go for the rune first. Something about upgrading my powers I like so, so much. Speaking of which, I almost collected all seven in the level now and still haven't upgraded any of my powers, which 
is a little bit silly, but I still seem to make it out okay. There's a lot of goodies in this room, but every once in a while one of the guards steps in and takes a look around. Um, so there's a few little quirks right here. So I just grabbed that rune. Um, the other thing that you're going to do is there's a key inside a jar. And uh, you've got to take the jar and you got to break it open, but that can potentially lead to one of the guards coming in. But anyway, guards already patrolling the area. So I kind of just chill out here for a little bit, waiting for him to pass by. Yeah, here's that jar that I just threw on the ground. Grab that key, open up this cabinet over here, take some of the goodies inside. Okay, and then this valve wheel right here. What you're gonna do is basically you're gonna be carrying this across to the other side of your current location and you're gonna use it to open up a gate which has a, a bone charm in it which is kinda neat it's kinda of annoying that you can't use any of your blink powers or anything like that while holding it even though you can use them while holding a body it doesn't make too much sense considering things like jars and this valve you could most likely carry it with one hand, but uh, whatever, just a minor little grape. Yeah, you could open up doors, but you can't use your powers. Doesn't make too much sense. At least it can still lean. That's a silly thing about this game. You can like be leaning with half your body around a corner and no one will see you. Even when the difficulty's cranked all the way up. Yeah, right around this corner is where you put the valve, right on that wall right there. It takes a few seconds to open up, but. Yeah, and then that's pretty much it. Um, there's one more bone charm that I backtrack a little bit right here to go run and get. It's on the clear opposite side of the map, as you can see right there, over yonder. But other than that, that's all that's left in the level. Yeah, it was a little sloppy in places. I did get seen. But I'm pretty sure I do collect all the runes, which, as I've said many times throughout this video already, is probably the most important thing, in my opinion. Because games are about having fun, you know? And even though I turned the difficulty all the way up, it's not because I'm a masochist or anything, it's because I want to have fun. I want the game to feel real even though their vision cones can still be a little ridiculously narrow sometimes. Anyway, what you just saw, you go down into that pit of rats, grab it, whatnot, and then, yeah, just head on over to the boat. Whee! They did a good job on this game. I really like it. So hopefully you'll be seeing another video about Dishonored coming for me soon, and hopefully Frostfall will be coming out too, because Skyrim's my main love at this point. But yeah, you can see there, I got 7 out of 7 runes. All good. So, catch you guys on the flip side.